In this video, I'm going to teach you how to log into ManageBack to enter a CAS activity so that it can be approved. You can then complete the activity and then finalize this, the uh, process so that the hours will count for your CAS program. So the first thing you're going, on to, going to want to do is to launch a browser. I'm going to use Mozilla Firefox. And you're going to go to our ManageBack website. If you don't know that address, the address is right here for you ssphs.manageback.com and then a login screen. I'm going to type in a sample student's email, but for you, you are going to use your school email, the apps at SSPPS or apps.sspps.org email, and then your password. Once you've typed that in, if it's the first time you've logged in, it'll just bring you to a welcome screen. To get to the CAS area of ManageBack, you're going to go up to IB Groups and slide down to CAS and click on it. And if you've not done anything with CAS yet, you could watch this short video. It's less than a minute, and this will tell you a little bit more about Creative in Action and Service. So it's a good activity for the first time you've logged on. You could also look at these ideas for what possible activities you could be doing for Creative Action and Service. Um, in our case, yearbook does not count because in our school, yearbook is a class where we earn credit. So yearbook in our school does not count as creative hours. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is step by step. You're going to want to add a CAS activity and then I will approve that as your CAS advisor. After you've done the activity, then you want to complete reflections and answer CAS questions. And then lastly, you're going to request a supervisor review. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do all of these steps. So, to add the activity that you want to participate in, you're going to click on Add CAS Activity. And it's going to take you to a screen where you're going to give me a bunch of information about what the activity is. So, for example, I am going to just use volleyball. It could be any activity. It could be volunteering at Speed My Starving Children. It could be playing um, a musical instrument. It, you're not limited to a sport. I'm just using this as an example. Now, because volleyball is happening my junior year, I'm going to write volleyball junior year, knowing that I might participate again as a senior. Now for any school activity, I'm limited to 50 hours. Because volleyball is a sport, they're gonna fit only in my action hours. If I were in dance team, I might wanna split my hours 25 in creative or 25 in action, or I could do 20 and 30. The bottom line is for any school activity, you can't exceed 50 hours total. Now, this is an in-school activity, and this part is a little bit confusing right here, but out of school is the, the left button, in school is the right button, and I'll put the start dates. Now, because I'm a junior, I can't count anything from the summer, so I'm going to pick the first day of school, which let's just say is September 10th, and the season will end, let's say, I'm making these up, let's just say October 31st. Now, I will want to put my coach's name down, so I will use Ms. Cornell as my coach, and I will put her email address in as the email address for my supervisor and I would look up on my school website her phone number. And then I'm gonna write a brief description and goal for this activity. So I'm gonna say I'm playing volleyball for the first time this year and hope to gain skills, confidence, and new friends. It might be different. If, if volleyball is something you've played every year, you might have new sets of goals for yourself. Now, because I'm doing something for the first time, that would maybe be a learning outcome that would be appropriate for me. Undertaking a new challenge, being aware of my strengths and weaknesses, and working with others. There may be other activities that have lots of these checked off. Some activities might only have one of these. I'm also going to check development of skills because I'm claiming I've never played before. Now, for each individual activity you enter, you can have as many or as few of these boxes checked. But if you can't check any learning outcomes, then it is not an appropriate CAS activity. And the last thing you're going to want to do is click Add CAS Activity. And now it's going to show up on your worksheet. So this is me, Susie Sample, entering volleyball as my junior year. Now you'll notice that it needs approval. So I will go in. As the, as the CAS supervisor and I'll prove it for you, okay? So now you know how to enter a CAS activity. In the next series of videos, I will show you how to complete your CAS activity.